This is Minecraft's world border. It's 30 million blocks wide. But today, I shrunk that bad boy to create a 100 by 100 world. This border leads to limited resources and increased mob spawns, but luckily we have a stronghold beneath us allowing us to beat the game. Now Minecraft isn't perfect, especially the world border, because as I travel through the dimensions, it increasingly breaks the game. Like this shouldn't happen, and you can't even place blocks in the end. But to not get too far ahead, let's start from the beginning. Now that we're in the world, what's the first thing we're gonna do? Chop trees? Heavens no, we're going to build a dirt tower and break our ankles. I learned this from a mystery ore video, and its purpose is to mark your spawn so you don't get lost if you go too far away. Wait a minute. So now we're just collecting some wood, getting a little bit of stone, and we already have stone tools because we are getting to work. And in work, I mean kill fish. Then it was time to explore the entire world, see what we're working with. Oh, and look at that, I already explored it all. We have trees, fish, and trees? Okay, so the land we were given was pretty small, but we just gotta make a house and it'll feel like home. So I'm building something simple. Yes, it is the house I always build when I first start a world, but this one is different. So you see, it's gonna have a shed roof. The reason why is I learned this recently in my architecture class and dang it, it looks bad. The simplest roof ever, how did I do so terrible? But as the first day came to a close, I stayed up to finish the roof because if it looked bad, the comments would make fun of me and I don't wanna be made fun of. And as the sun started to rise, I was done with the roof and appropriately named the house. My next goal is to get full iron armor and tools, so I'm putting a lot of time into the mine. So what do you think I found first? Maybe some iron ore, maybe some coal? How about a stronghold? Also, I found some iron in the chest, so if you guessed iron, I, yeah, I think you get half points. Since we're here, we might as well start looking for the portal. Yes, I'm not even close to having everything I need to beat the game, but I'm doing it for the kicks and giggles and a little side of death. Yeah, this is why I'm glad I did do this on hardcore. In a 100 by 100 world, there's less space for mobs to spawn, so they spawn a lot more concentrated. Meaning, instead of one skeleton, you have the whole Roman Empire. But you just can't die once, why not again? And now I'm really glad this isn't hardcore, but three times, really? And I was too busy dying to mention, this is the first time I found a geode. First impression's pretty bad. So to save the pacing of this video, I'm going to act like I didn't die anymore after that, and the reason I tore up my flooring was totally not because I had run out of resources. It, it, it was renovations, yeah, renovations. Um, I didn't give up though. Uh, after a bit, I did get some iron, enough for a sword and boots, as I had gotten an iron pickaxe previously. And similarly, I stole an iron door for my house, then locked myself out. Might as well start some agriculture. And then I spent the next little bit mining for iron. I wanted to get a full set of armor and tools as soon as possible because I had just spent the last few days mining for a bit, dying, then going, okay, I am done mining, and then start mining two minutes later. Now that we're done with that, it's time for a stable food source, he says as he eats four tropical fish. So far, the only thing I've been able to eat is fish and a little bit of bread. For example, all I have on me right now is five loaves and two fishes, which doesn't last long, especially compared to a few years ago, it could have fed like 5,000. My choice of food ended up being cow. I was lucky enough to find a few in the woods behind my house. I just set up a little farm, nothing special. Well, out there, I also found some pigs. We could set up a pig farm, but screw pigs. To finish the farm, I carved through a mountain to add a little path right up to the cows. And it's now time to get a food source for them. It's a wheat farm, that's kind of it. Now we're back in the mines because I got diamonds on the mind. I'm not too sure what the end fight will look like, but I think it's safe to say that diamond armor with at least decent enchantments would go a long way. This is also my first time seriously mining in 1.17, so I had no idea what I was doing. I ended up mining on Y level six because this website told me to, but mining at Y level six worked out quickly as I found an eight vein of diamonds and two minutes later found more right before my pickaxe broke. I used them to make a diamond pickaxe. I have a diamond pickaxe yet I am always starving. I might as well keep mining and during this trip I found this underwater ravine. This is a place I'll end up a lot and hey at the end of it is the portal room. Kinda useless, but now I know I'll only need 8 eyes of ender. And it was here I mined all the obsidian I needed for an enchant table and a nether portal. Yeah, I found the stronghold and had yet to go to the nether. That's just the 100 by 100 world for ya. So that's our next goal, nether travel. But before we do that, we gotta set up an enchant table. What I did was put the thing on stilts and those new crystal blocks. This was less of, oh, this will look so good, and more of, hey, I like amethyst blocks, so I might as well. Right before I was going to enchant, I realized I had never mined any lapis, so back to the mines. I found this cave right here, but it was loaded with mobs, so I decided not to bother. I can't lose my 21 levels. Then I spent the next whole day strip mining, finding nothing. It was enough boredom to convince me to risk all 21 levels of mine for a possibility of lapis. 
And look at that, after clearing out all the mobs, I immediately found Lapis. But there isn't any sugar cane in this world, meaning no paper, meaning no books, so no bookshelves. It was just basic level 1 enchantments for my armor. Okay, so now that everything is enchanted, this is the perfect time to remember there's a freaking end library with like a million bookshelves. Look how easy books are to get, I even got a pretty OP book for my diamond pickaxe. So by now I should be going to the nether, I've like enchanted armor, but I kinda know how the nether is going to be, boring and tedious. I'm putting it off again, this time to make a mob farm. It's nothing special, but I did use some of my deep slate, so it's looking pretty nice. Midway through, I did run out of resources, so I'm mining again. I did find diamond though, but with an emphasis on the singularity of that word. Back to work on the mob farm the next day. All my focus went to this so much that I didn't even bother killing cows, rather I just ate rotten flesh, the true meal of the middle class. Finished the roof with all of my slabs, even granite and diorite slabs because the project budget ran out, and all that was left was to add the trapdoors and water. Mobs will think that these trapdoors are full blocks, walk into them, and fall through. Then the water pushes them right to the killing chamber. So while the mobs slowly start to pile up in the mob farm, I found other projects for me to work on. Expanding the farm, making some paths, getting killed by a drowned, all were necessary things to complete before going to the nether. And finally, since I had no other things to waste my time on, I was going to the nether. Right when I got in, I started mining to the fortress. I was going to get those blaze rods as soon as possible, but it's not so easy. I barely have a fortress in my border, and not even a blaze spawner. It's just this little strip here. So here's the plan. This is our little strip, which is in the boundary of the nether fortress, called the Bounding Box by the wiki. With my vague knowledge of blaze spawning, I know they can spawn here in this hallway, but very slowly. What we do is then expand this hallway, giving the blazes more places to spawn. Since the expansion is technically in the nether fortress Bounding Box, the game thinks the nether brick is a part of the fortress, allowing blazes to spawn. That's all the knowledge I was going off of. And that's what I spent the next few days doing, mining out the room for the expansion. Also, while I was mining, I would smelt the netherrack I collected into nether brick that would then be used to craft, you guessed it, nether bricks. It was great. It was all going to plan. Until I saw this piglin outside the border. This is now not going to plan. That shouldn't happen. While in the caves, we talked about how it's a lot more dangerous due to higher mob spawns. Well, a perk of that con is if you need those mob spawns, you can get them. And farming blaze rods is when you need those mob spawns. But for some reason, in the nether, we won't get those mob spawns. The border acts normally for me. It's 100 by 100 and I can't leave. For mobs though, they just don't care. They'll walk out of it and even spawn outside the border. It's probably because the game thinks the border is big number wide and when I try to fix it, I die. Now I kinda understand what's going on, but not well enough to explain it. Basically, less blazes are going to spawn on top of already not getting a lot of blaze spawns. They're no longer confined to this little section, they'll spawn all over the fortress. All I could do was keep on expanding my little strip. Barely anything was spawning, and sometimes I would get blazes, but just wouldn't get any rods from them. Sometimes blazes just spawn barely out of reach for me, so to combat this, I would fish them to me. Then I formulated a strategy. You may think this is cheating, but hear me out. What I would do is expand the fortress a bit, run to the other end of the world, turn it to peaceful, and then turn it back to hard. This would reset the mobs spawning new ones, which could possibly be a blaze. Is this cheating? Well... Maybe? I did kill all the mobs that I could before turning it to peaceful, so I was more despawning the mobs outside the border, you know, the ones that shouldn't be there. Even with this tactic, it still took a while, even though we only needed 4 rods since we had a 4 eye portal. But we finally did it, and to that I say, screw the nether, I'm leaving and never coming back. And as if the nether wanted to suck one last time, right as I left? Explosion! Well, that's another thing to mark off our list. All that's left is getting ender pearls and diamond armor, more grinding, great! To start things off, I'm lighting up most of the world. This is to prevent mobs from spawning, which will increase the rate of the mob farm, which will then get me more XP faster. Next, I decided to go mining for netherite. This was so I could get a netherite pickaxe, allowing me to find diamonds faster. But not for long though, as my pickaxe quickly broke, I got nothing, that was a disaster. Freaking walk of shame on the way back. Remember how I made that cow farm and I called it a stable food source? It wasn't stable enough, shown by how much rotten flesh I've eaten. So that's being expanded. No, no, I'm not giving them more room, I'm just shoving more of them in. While doing all of this, the mob farm has been running in the background, slowly giving me more and more levels, getting close to level 30 enchantment. Now I don't see them as too necessary, but if you enchant at level 30 on a pickaxe, you have a chance to get fortune 3 with it. 
I practically need that if I want to get full diamond armor. Cause I'll be honest, I'm sick of mining. Half the footage I've just skipped over because there's nothing to say, just me strip mining in the exact same place. But while mining, I have found diamonds and I just never mined them, waiting until I got fortune 3. Like a vein of 4 diamonds could potentially be 16, so I decided to wait. Getting level 30 would take a while, so I filled my time with getting ender pearls. The most common way in 1.16 to get ender pearls fast is to trade with piglins. This is 1.17. In 1.16, you would get an ender pearl trade for closer to 5% of the time. You're looking at using about 20 gold to get a trade. 1.17 over halves that rate, now with the odds of getting ender pearls being 2.13%. You're now looking at using 50 gold to get the trade. That absolutely sucks, but it can suck way more. In 1.16, you'd get 4 to 8 pearls per trade. 1.17 is 2 to 4. The minimum just became the maximum. I should say I did give it a try. I was hoping to get lucky and get pearls, put all my gold into it, and I got nothing. Frick piglins. But that wasn't going to stop me. I just changed projects. This is my big idea, a platform. Actually, three platforms all on top of each other. What I would do is every night, mobs would spawn on the platforms. Then if I saw an enderman, I'd look at it, it'd get angry, teleport over, and then I'd kill it. First attempt didn't go so well. There goes my 28 levels. I did end up killing the enderman, no pearl though. And then if there weren't any more endermen on the platform, I'd just sleep. I'd sleep? So it seems that mobs on the platform are escaping and are coming to my house, preventing me from sleeping. This is a simple fix, because all we have to do is kill some mobs, build a tower in the sky, place my bed, and sleep. Much better. And to sum up the next few days, this enderman spawning method actually worked quite well, except I was very unlucky and didn't get any pearls from them. And when the platform wasn't spawning enderman, it was spawning literally anything else. It was like dealing with toddlers. Like I'm just doing some level 30 enchanting and they start making noise, throwing arrows at me, one of them freaking explodes. It was so frustrating I even forgot to say I got fortune 3. Wait, what the frick? I got fortune 3! This is finally it! I can do so much, like the floodgates opened! First up, I mined all my diamonds with that fortune 3 pickaxe. I've been waiting to do that forever. And I got tons of diamonds, especially because I mined a 10 vein of diamonds. Yeah, I know, those don't exist. But here we are, looking at a 10 vein. 31 diamonds in total, it's such a beautiful sight. It was turned into a nice set of armor. Then I grinded XP with the mob farm and ended up getting Prot 4 on the helmet and Prot 3 on the leggings. On the boots, we got Fire Protection 3. There's no fire in the end, that's useless, but then Prot 4 on the chest plate. Now all we need is those stupid ender pearls. The platform spawner thing kinda worked, it's more charming than anything, but for all the endermen I've killed, I got no pearls. I was desperate and only saw two options, spawn in the ender pearls and pretend like I didn't cheat them in, or go back to those dumb stupid piglins. Please, if you watched this far and haven't subscribed, please, cause I sucked up my pride and went mining for gold. Also, remember when I said frick piglins, I kinda gotta write them an apology now so they'll trade with me again? Hopefully they accept a twit longer instead. But we are now mining for gold. I decided that the overworld could work the best because of my fortune 3 pick, and it did. The amount of gold I got per ore doubled on average. I love the 1.17 update allowing us to get raw gold. This is just a cool tidbit. I just mined down out of nowhere, not sure why, but I just found diamonds. I didn't even need them, I just thought it was cool. The first time I went into the nether, I went in with 13 gold and got three pearls right off the bat. I could actually do this. I mined around some of the nether gold ore for a bit, adding 10 to the pot. And then the piglin gave me 20 pearls. No, just kidding. I got nothing. Back to the mines. But this time I have an efficiency for pick. We should find more gold. It was kind of useless. I ended up finding most of the gold in this underwater ravine. And then I got another pearl from an enderman I found in the portal room. I left that mining trip with 31 gold. It was cut short because I was dumb and broke by fortune pick. Well, we have what we need, so it's time for trading. Soon, I got a pearl trade. If this is four pearls, I'll have enough to go to the end. It was two. Luckily, after a bit of waiting, pearls were dropped again. No matter what, we have enough. It dropped eight of them. How? And funnily enough, right when I got enough ender pearls, the piglin just disappeared. Huh. Odd. Craft a few diamond tools, a sword, deep breath, it's time for the end. As we enter the end, the border breaks even more, like what did you expect? So what's happening is the game thinks we are outside the border and you can't place blocks when you're outside the border. Now hypothetically it should kill us, but the reason it doesn't is because, I don't know, it didn't want to. All this means is we are going to beat the ender dragon without placing blocks. This is why we brought the bow, without it we'd struggle to break the crystals, so let's start with those.
Oh, and I should say, if I get hit by the dragon, there's no way to clutch. We can't place water, which made this even more terrifying. Now that the crystals are gone, we start dealing damage. We're mostly shooting, but when it perches, that's when we do large amounts of damage. And just like that, I beat the Ender Dragon in a 100x100 world in 10 hours, 22 minutes, and 53 seconds. Then collect our prize, the Dragon Egg. Except I can't. Well, 